We welcome you to today's webinar, Preventing the Next Deployment Issue with Continuous Performance Testing and Monitoring. First of all, I'd like to go through the agenda for the day. We'll begin the presentation with a little history of what application performance monitoring is about. Then we'll talk a little bit more about some steps you can take to be more proactive in your monitoring. And then the need for a joint APM and DCM solution. And finally, we'll tie it all together with, an, with a brief summary and some time for Q&A. Before we get into the presentation today, a little bit of housekeeping. We're going to try to keep the presentation to about a half an hour. We understand people's schedules are quite busy, and a half an hour should be adequate to cover this topic today. If you have questions along the way, please feel free to submit them through your chat window in the GoToMeeting application. It takes, again, take some time at the end to go through people's questions as they come in. And finally, we'll be making the slides as well as the recording available on qualsense.com uh, tomorrow. First, now I'd like to introduce our speakers. First, from, first up will be Tom Batchelor, Senior Solutions Architect at CrawlSense. And then the next will be Yuri Margolet, Director of Product Management from DMI Maestro. Now, without further ado, I'd like to hand over the presentation to Tom Batchelor. Thank you, Frank, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, so to begin with, uh, we'll talk about the history of, of APM, or Application Performance Monitoring and how we got to where we are today. So in the beginning, um, when we had our infrastructure and we had our applications, um, in terms of managing issues and problems, uh, that was largely really driven by finding things out from the end users. So typically we would have things running. Um, oftentimes the first thing we'd know about an issue from an end user experience perspective would be when they called into the, the IT or the help desk. Um, we would then go, we would then try to understand the problem, perhaps recreate it, simulate, uh, simulate it, or go through log files and these types of things. Um, and we would go ahead and we would get the problem resolved, but often it would take us sort of quite a lot of time and quite a lot of, of effort to go ahead and do that. Um, and really one of the things we were lacking is we had no real insight into end user experience, uh, response times users were getting, reliability, and, and these types of things. Then in terms of the next evolution of that, uh, we moved on really to, to on-demand traces. Um, so we had monitoring technology that, that could give us data explaining what's happening and where things are going. Um, but often, originally, we would, we would turn these on in response to an issue. It's not something that we would run all the time. Um, so that's great for understanding a problem, uh, but it doesn't really help us discover or predict issues. Um, so then whereas we're still relying, we're still dependent on end users calling in, um, and we're not really discovering ourselves when issues are occurring. Then we get on to a new generation, which is really about 24-7 monitoring. Um, now we're getting end user monitoring. Uh, we're getting visibility into the entirety of the stack, all our tiers. Um, we can understand our SLAs 24-7. And then when there are issues, we have some tools we can use to, to drill down. We can look at problem histories and these types of things and, and, and start to understand what's going on. But this still does give us some issues. Um, we're still reactive, and, it, and it's still not a perfect world. Um, often with the tools that we have, um, they're siloed in their application, their approach. So we have tools that look at our, our operating system. We have tools that look at our DB, tools that look at our application layer. Um, they all provide us great data, and they're all very, very valuable. But what it's not giving us is a real true end-to-end -end picture of how our application is behaving. Um, and in a lot of sites, a lot of applications, what we see today is we see some great monitoring tools. We see a lot of green on dashboards. But there can still be issues from the end user perspective, and people can still have problems. So what can we do about that? How can we go ahead and, and get that fixed and resolve that? Um, so it's really about taking steps to get that end user monitoring and giving us data that enables us to be more proactive, uh, go through issues, discover things. And then once we do discover things, really understand what what we need to do to fix them. So it's really about looking at uh, how can we fit that into a life cycle and, uh, and how does proactive management work in practice. So the first thing we need to do if we look at the bottom left here is we need to automatically figure out when our applications have issues. Ideally we'd like to know and understand that, um, particularly if there's slow degradations or problems are developing, 
I do really want to understand before end users really notice and really impact it, because then we can take steps to resolve them while keeping our service and our applications up and running. So once we detect those, we can then set alerts, open tickets, and then we can begin the, the resolution steps. So to start with, we need to try and understand um, what applications are affected, specific bits of functionality. Maybe it's things like specific geographic locations. Get an understanding of the magnitude of the issue, something that really also helps us put a, a business impact onto a problem. So if there are a number of issues in the environment, we can prioritize and make sure we resolve the right ones. Uh, we can use tools like SVA analysis, and we'll show this later, um, to help us quickly detect which particular components are giving us bottlenecks. Uh, where do we need to go ahead and, and focus our resolution efforts? Uh, we can use items such as topology maps, which automatically show the flow of our data through our application. So we can really understand the dependencies that we have, the components that we're using, and where things are going wrong. Once we have that, we need to drill down. Uh, maybe we want to identify a, a faulty method. Maybe there's some issue with some queries. Maybe there's a database issue. Maybe it's a third-party service. Uh, but certainly, we need the data to be able to drill down and really identify exactly what our, our problem is. And then we can go ahead and get that resolved. Once we tend to understand our issues, it tends to be fairly quick to, to get that resolution. Um, and then we can provide that fix, provide that workaround. And then we want to use tools such as uh, a change impact analysis. Um, let's verify that we've resolved our problems and everything's good. And we can go ahead and we can get that ticket closed. And our users are, are kept happy. So what does this tool look like in practice, and, and, and what's the data that we get, and, and what do we have here? So to start with, we can have a, a view such as this, which is looking at the different request types, different transaction types that we have in our application. Um, using these, we can set SLAs, understand their performance, um, understand their error rates, and these types of things. So a very useful tool. Um, know what's happening in our application, know how it's supposed to perform, and know when that performance steps out of line. So I mentioned topology earlier. Uh, topology is very important, especially in, the, in today's world. Applications are becoming not just individually increasingly more complex, but there's more interdependencies in our organization. We have more apps talking to one another. Really trying to understand everything uh, a request or application touches can actually sometimes be pretty tricky. Um, you know, we have tools such as CMDB, which really help us, comp really help us understand this. Uh, but there's nothing like getting a real-time picture of the the true flow that you have going through all of your different nodes, technologies, tiers, understanding those dependencies, how they fit together. Um, often when there are issues, sometimes we can find issues actually in components we didn't really know were used. Um, but if they are used, we need to understand that. And we need to understand the impact that those components are having. Uh, note that when we build this, it's always automatic based on transaction flow. Um, so this isn't something that we go ahead and configure. It's something that changes dynamically over time. And it's not just about production monitoring as well. Um, also, we want to make sure we use this technology in, in, in UAT or performance tests or even earlier environments. Um, in the latter part of the presentation, this is you know, certainly they're going to be the main focus. Uh, but when we're building applications, when we're load testing these things, um, it's very important to understand the performance. And it's very the issues, they are the result of change. So understanding one load test to another, one release to another, can really give us information that's very helpful in understanding if we're going the right direction. Um, and also making sure when we add new functionality to our applications, that that's not impacting other functionality. It's not slowing things down. Uh, we want each release of our code uh, to be a, a benefit to, to all users um, and not to introduce anything that we then start to have to combat in production. Um, particularly on the change analysis. Uh, very useful to be, able to, to be able to slice and dice through change and, and compare information. Um, and it's not just about understanding the end-to-end -end picture, it's about also understanding that on the component level as well. So if we are making changes and things do slow down, understand you know, which part of the stack is impacted. Is it our web services layer? Is it our, our application server? Is it our database? Uh, see exactly what's going on here and, and exactly what's happening. And then, not just looking at data on 
aggregates. Um, look at data access great. We can get a lot of information and glean that. But often we want to drill down and we want to actually get down to the nitty gritty of exactly what's happening. Um, so it's about being able to track those individual transactions, uh, individual requests, understanding specific SQL queries and executing and these types of things. Here we can see in this case we've got an Oracle Forms example uh, where we have we can understand the time we're spending in the Oracle Forms atlas. Then as we start to move into the data center, we can see how we're breaking down between things like our Apache, uh, our OC4J, or our, our WebLogic container, uh, understand the amount of time that we're spending in the Forms runtime, and then start to see the specific SQL queries that we're generating. How many are we generating? How long are they taking to respond? Really get that picture of how do all these components fit in uh, into the response time that my end user is seeing. And taking things outside of the, the data center side of the application, uh, more from a production perspective, understand how things are affected by different geographies. So here we can see we've got two different locations. Um, often, and especially with internal applications, we can certainly see location-specific issues. Maybe there's issues with the, the network to a particular office, um, these types of things. They're things that users worry about, and they're going to they're gonna have a, an impact on the end users and give them poor performance. And it's important for us to understand that. So. Not only just so we can remedy it, but also so we don't spend time um, trying to look for a problem maybe in the data center, maybe in the application that doesn't exist there because there's something specific wrong with the network or with a specific location, uh, which is a different set of issues and a different set of resolution paths that we need to go ahead and take that. Okay. Um, so what does this bring to us uh, and what are the benefits? So it's really about trying to give us increased operational efficiency. So about avoiding application brownouts. So avoiding things slowing down or things not being quite right, avoiding those slowdowns. When issues do occur or when we see issues that might occur, about reducing the amount of effort that we need to take to get those resolved, reducing our mean time to resolution. From more of a testing perspective, more about saving on hidden costs. So understand issues early on in the application lifecycle before they get expensive to fix. And then let's solve problems in testing before we go into live. And let's solve them quickly and have the tools that enable us to really understand what we need to solve and how we can solve it. And this leads very nicely into Yuri's part of the presentation where he's going to discuss DCM and DB Maestro. Thank you, Tom. So let's start with short introduction of what is DCM. DCM stands for Database Change Management. This is part of ALM, Application Lifecycle Management. And this is the foundation and the basic of doing agile and continuous integration, continuous testing, continuous monitoring. Okay, let's talk about the database too. In the software development, we started with two tiers, client and database, then we've gone to three tiers, desktop, application, server, and database, and then we have web server, we have storage, our technology, the topology of tiers has increased and is very complex. But the database tier remains as very important, as very difficult to know what happens. <coughs> and all the versioning control solution that gives very good solution for all the desktop, the IIS, the application servers, the web servers, the report servers, all of this didn't handle well the database. And this is because the database is a central resource and when you deploy changes, when you promote changes, when you do some changes, you cannot just copy and paste your executable. You need to maintain the business data when you promote changes. The need for DCM is, you know, you need the DCM in order to have visibility to what happened in the development. You want to have some order in your database development. You don't want anyone to change anything whenever they want. You want to prevent out, prevent out of process changes. Of course, you want to create automated tasks, so you can reduce the overhead on the development. You can have problems when you release versions. 
and you respond slowly to changes in the requirement. You do manual deployment. When you have DCM, and let's focus on the development phase, you have a database changes repository. All the changes are documented. You follow the SCM method, check out, check in. Every change for the database object is being documented in the repository. You can extract it. You can control who can do what, where, when, and why. For the deployment point of view, you can integrate your deployment engine. You can have business level audit. And you can have roles and responsibilities enforcement to reduce the people that are allowed to change stuff in the production. When you have DCM, you can review the changes made during the development. And this allows you to monitor critical objects, critical database objects that are critical for performance, critical for security, and get an alert when they are being changed during the development. And of course, the cost of fixing it, the cost of finding out that this object was changed is much more expensive than if you just found it in the production. If you found this change in the development phase, then there is enough time to redesign, to reset the software, to reset the technology, the architecture, and make sure your application will have speed. OK. Thank you, Uri. Um, so just to, before we get into questions, just to summarize, um, Really what we've been talking about this afternoon is, is today's solutions and, and methodologies are still very reactive uh, when it comes to managing the performance and, and understanding what's going on. Uh, but there are, there are strategies out there that can mitigate the risk of change, um, help us understand the challenges that we have, and really it's about helping us provide a better service to our, to our end user customers and about enabling us to add more business value. Um, and DB Micro and Coral Sense offer a joint solution, um, and particularly around the, the, the database management space. DB Micro offers the tools to understand our database changes, um, have those documented, and understand how they fit into our into the rest of our software development. Uh, Coral Sense are able to offer the tools, which can help us track that performance, understand the, the performance changes that we're seeing as a result of our code changes and our database changes. This really enables us to to capture our performance issues early or capture any other application issues early. And then once we catch these early, it's much easier for us to resolve them at that stage. Um, and it gives us what we all want, which is a nice, smooth running production environment. Um, what I'd like to do now is open up to questions um, using the, the question facility uh, within the, the GoToWebinar window. Um, so if you have any, any questions, then please enter those now. Great. Well, Tom, this is Frank again. It, it seems like there aren't, aren't any questions at this moment. So uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, especially thank our speakers, Tom and Yuri, for a great presentation. Um, if you're interested in learning more about uh, DB Maestro Solution, there's some information on the slide. You can go to www.dbmaestro.com, and there's a phone number and email address. Or you can check out CoralSense.com. Uh, and you can check out a demo of Coral Sense's solution or email us at info at coralsense.com. Again, thank you everyone for joining us today and have a great day.